Hi there, this is Susie again. Um, today she's going to talk about her maiden hair affairs. Maiden hair affairs is, is commonly known as, and it's scientifically known as uh, Adiantum radianum. And of course, Adiantum radianum comes in about 100 different species of maiden hair ferns, and most of them are obviously the natives of Australia, the Pacifics, subtropics, and tropical areas around the globe. And they are found all stretches right along the uh, equator, as far as Indian, Indian Ocean or in India, we go right up to the Bahamas, near the North America and the South America. That's where you would, uh, you would find them in the natural environment, under the trees, where they're just growing it naturally, or on their rock facades, river banks, crevices, um, and places like that where they are containing a lot of moisture for them to disperse their spores and that's how things grow in those particular type of environment. Why in the tropics? Because they do love a lot of um, humidity. Humidity has to be high. The temperature has to be within certain range. And some do love the cold temperatures, which I will talk about them later. And they also do not mind the temperatures from 20 to 30 uh, mark. Um, he, here in my atrium, I have got, uh, I actually got four plants originally to plant in my atrium. The one above, as you can see, and the second one is down below over there. This are um, two plants. I planted them about four years ago when I shifted uh, from Sydney. And um, and then um, from those two plants, as you can see, I have got probably hundreds of little babies from the spores that has been dispersed by the water, possibly also by the wind when I leave the door open at times, but not very often that I do leave the door open. So there are two methods that dispose their seeds of the spores is through water or wind. Now, as you can see, most of them have got um, where it's really growing is full of moisture, full of water. The rocks are literally saturated with spongy looking spagna mossy type of area it's been created by the moisture and the spores fallen on them and that's how the ferns, the maiden hair things are grown so beautifully. And I have a little wood just here, this particular fern is literally growing on a very uh, wet or moist, moisture driven roof. And over there, as you can see, it's also growing on the rock. So, if the rock is nice, moist, where there is rivers flowing, water, streams, this particular plant just loves those areas away from the wind, high winds, they hate wind, and they also hate direct sunlight. So from here, I am going to show you um, a more uh, natural place that I have put the third plant in my atrium. And I'd like you to see how beautifully that particular one is growing. See you soon. Here I am with my third plant of maiden hair fan, uh, Adiantum radianum fragrance. This particular plants that I showed you uh, before and now are the fragrance which is the most common variety of maiden hair things you can grow here in Australia. Here's number three and look at the size of it and this is the growth in the last three years and I haven't done anything else, they haven't been getting any special treatment. All I do is, when I first put them in, I used to liquid feed them uh, a Yates, um, uh, what do you call the Yates particular variety of uh, general uh, 
liquid feed. And every now and then, uh, when I'm ready to feed other plants, I will just put a few pellets of uh, organic dynamic litter near the roots, uh, probably about a dozen or so. And this is the outcome um, that they get because they just seem to love the amount of moisture it gets from obviously the flowing um, pond and behind it, it's like a little stream of water flowing. So it gets enough moisture around here. And of course the temperature must be just ideal for this particular plant to live where it's living. And from now, I, I would like to get to my table and I'll show you other variety of uh, maiden hair ferns that I'm growing in this particular age now. I actually took them out from behind me. They were all sitting over there in their pots and I just took them to the table so that we can actually discuss and talk about them. See you soon. Bye for now. Here I am at my table where I do a lot of planting, potting, repotting, um, looking at diseases and plant health in general. And um, I would like uh, to talk about this particular one here. As you can see, has been devastated by something. I'm sure you would have guessed it what it has been devastated by. So when you have got hundreds of plants in my age like in my atrium sometimes these little pots do get covered with other things and it's hard to see uh, what is actually going on um, in there so the time i do find out it sometimes can be a little bit too late and this particular capillus venaris is the scientific name of course, all maiden hair ferns are Adiantum, Redianum, and then it's uh, other the new cultivars you get, or it comes under different subspecies. So here I've got many species, but I'm going to talk about these Capillus, Venaris, as Jeff has already came close to show what has happened to this particular plant. It was doing beautifully, it was as huge as but it's like it happened overnight where the caterpillars the moth caterpillars that somehow get through the windows in my atrium at night and they want to lay eggs of course they lay eggs and they seem to love uh, for some reason the maiden hair ferns that and, and and other ferns that i have to lay eggs and then we get um, quite a few caterpillars so i have to every night or during the day just check on them if there are any caterpillars and if, if they do what do i use um, i generally use dipel um, or success by yates or you could make homemade stuff if you don't like using chemicals i mean I sometimes do and sometimes don't. Depends how quickly I want the education of um, these so-called caterpillars because I really want dead but, uh, within hours. So I tend to use local chemicals at times. But other than that, you can make that particular mixture as I told you in my other videos, um, the uh, pest oil or the oil mixture uh, you can make and then spray on them and it may take at least a week to be dedicated it because they're not really quick action uh, uh, chemicals or, or the organic uh, chemicals that we make for, for our plants. Here we are, it's, um, it's now recuperating beautifully. I'm getting some new growth here and I have to really keep an eye on this particular one and because of its beautiful finds, it's just a, such a beautiful fern, this is the beautiful fine leaves it has and it's uh, in a little circular formation and I just love the panicules how it's um, uh, coming out so I'm hoping that in another couple of months uh, I will have a lot more new growth and this particular plant looking really good and it, it is called Capillus venaris so this is uh, its scientific name And here is one of my favorite. And this is um, the native of Australia, if you didn't know. Um, and this plant uh, grows really um, 
outdoors, out in the tropics, um, the top half of Australia, uh, in the tropics and subtropics um, around the Capricorn area and in, near the equator. And they do marvelously well there. And it is called Adiantum his 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 um, his pedulum, sorry his pedulum. Um, so um, and its um, common name is rough uh, maiden hair fan. I don't know why it's rough maiden hair fan. And when the new leaves come, it actually is red, and it's literally is very spectacular when you see this uh, new leaves formation, and then it comes into really lovely luscious green and i also love the way it is like like your hand like a like so many fingers uh, with these pinnacles with a darker um stem here they all looks like your own hair hair sort of stems on them and they are absolutely beautiful fern if you would like to grow something a little bit different is is uh, at the end of his pedula and um, I would highly recommend it and it, it does come from the tropics obviously loves the temperature range from 18 degrees right up to say 28 to 30 degrees it, it has that survival range but away from its survival range over 30 or under 18 degrees it also tolerates the cold temperatures which in my age you might get up to five degrees so it's quite good cold tolerant plant that you can plant in your atrium um, so most of them would tolerate uh, cold and that's possibly why i've got them here in victoria but obviously if you were in new south wales queensland you would more likely maybe plant outside under the under the trees huge trees which they would love the compost the humus the leaf matter that grows underneath the trees and you know you, you may be lucky enough to see it on the side of the road on the facade on the on the rocks and and on crevices this sort of plant growing in its natural environment and i'm one of the lucky ones that this sort of plants do so well in this my atrium here because it is covered by the frost it doesn't get frost it does drop up to five degrees in winter and in summer it may reach up to 30 degrees in this particular area i just love this fern any problems that they have there'll be leaf browning old leaves um, browning you just chop them off which i normally do and i normally like to feed my plants of course and um, there's only two things that i feed them with and not all the time i don't like feeding ferns with the uh, you know this so-called um, uh, base with these companies that you buy stuff from. I like the natural matter uh, when I'm growing my ferns, which is the uh, um, the peat soil, peat moss, and then I combine it with gritty sandy soil for good drainage. And sometimes I might add vermiculite in the pots, but out there planting it in, straight into the soil, uh, without the pots, um, uh, I might just add a bit of vermiculite to keep the moisture in. Of course, there's quite a lot of moisture in my atrium, so really speaking, they are very easy care. They don't really require any hard work, really. Once I put them in, I just water them every third day, and in summer, I might do it even every second day. It just depends how dry the soil gets so i always like to keep the soil really moist which means it it really needs water all the time you can't let any of these things dry out because it just loves that moisture it loves the humidity and things like this so if you think that your plants do do need feeding i usually just have these side by eights or purpose um, uh, soluble plant food where i just make a five liter of it and um, about i think a couple of spoonfuls or something like that just read the direction and feed all your plants with that and i love, also like to use dynamic lift as an organic matter um, and maybe once or twice a year when i get keen that's when my uh, plants get fed so this is his pedulum goodbye to that one
now we are coming into Fritz particular plant this one is called Fritz I think no sorry Pacific Maid uh, Pacific Maid which is also known as Delta Maiden Hair Fern I just love the tree, uh, the leaf formation on this particular plant. It is so different with other maiden hair ferns. It just seems to um, spread its pinnacles, just spreads beautifully, uh, giving this plant a sort of triangular shape, just the way it's growing. And it is a very compact formation plant, as you can see. Here's a new one coming in here. Just beautiful. It's just so different. Uh, all these maiden hair ferns, there are about 100 species of maiden hair ferns. So you can imagine, you know, I mean, I've only got a few collection here. Imagine collecting hundreds of them. And then most of them are cultivars where people have grown or crossbred them or, 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 or you know, with seed pollination and things like that. And um, leaf browning usually happens when something is not quite right. Usually it's the temperature base. So if, if it's going yellowy, uh, you know that it's not liking the temperature and it's probably not getting enough humidity. They do like humidity. And if, if this, the air is dry, this plant just can't stand dry air. It has to have a very clean, smooth, Airflow around the plant. It loves that fresh air. So do try to provide the fresh air every day It doesn't mean you keep the windows right open and have the wind blasting on it because it hates that So it, as long as the windows is open and it's quiet, no wind, it just loves that uh, airflow So this is a, a Pacific made uh, plant, uh, made in hair fern that I really love too the next one comes, um, this is the one that um, has got a Fritz, uh, I think it's called Fritz uh, Luthi or Luthi, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Fritz is also, I call it shortcut as Fritz, the maiden hair fern, and look at its pinnacles. It's also really beautiful with this black hair strip. Um, stems on it and you can also see there is some browning there uh, two things number one this could be the old leaves that have browned off that uh, I will have to clean it up usually once a year I bring them out here and give them a good haircut not necessarily all the haircut but just the brown ones get a, a, a good clean haircut and I take all the brown bits off and normally it's the bottom ones that brown off and there's nothing to worry about because it's just the old leaves now drying out and you get the new leaves. I mean, this is the season right now. All the ferns are really throwing out new growth. And for some reason, just the end of summer, or, or just yeah, the, the end of summer and in autumn is the is the time here in in Australia. The the fern starts to really um, throw a lot of new new leaves, you know, new fronds. Um, so this is one of them, and it's looking luscious, I think. It just needs a bit of tidying up. And of course, I may end up feeding this one. I'm, I'm, I think that it's complaining that the leaves, even the new leaves, are a little bit going yellowy. So once I've fed, fed this one with this particular all-purpose um, soluble fertilizer, it should um, look a lot healthier. And this is the most common variety of fern that you can actually get in Australia. And these plants do not like to be grown outside as some people think that um, we need to, you know, if you grow them outside, it does better than inside. Well, this particular one, the fragrance, is, is really renowned to to be grown inside the house rather than outside the house. You can try it, but the better one that you can grow outside is the Ethiopicum. Ethiopicum is very similar to this, 
It's a little bit more stumpy. I mean, it hasn't got this about 40 centimeter length growth. That one is probably about 30 centimeter growth with a lot smaller leaves. Those are the variety or the type you need to grow them outside because it, it does very well if you grow them under the tree shade or against the wall where there is no sun. None of these maiden hair likes direct sun. That's one thing I think a lot of us make mistake just plonking them anywhere, not thinking the condition of them. So keep in mind that they do not like direct sun. They prefer a well lit, bright light area like in this particular place. They don't mind semi-shade, they will grow really well and, and some of them don't even mind shade. So, so uh, this particular, which is the most common variety of fragrance uh, uh, maiden hair affairs that you can grow them in Australia and it is the Australian native. Here I have got, as you can see, I'll just get in here and show you, it is all this old growth growing here. And I'm just going to clean these brown bits here and make it all looking nice. This is my fourth uh, plant that I bought uh, when I first moved into, into this place. So the third, this is the fourth one. So it's a fairly old one. I need to really look after it because I think it's lacking uh, perhaps some um, fertilizer also. But the new growths are looking good. They're coming away beautiful. Just needs a good cleanup. And please do check for all the buds. Maiden hair ferns do attract millibuds. They do attract um, scales and caterpillars. The scales are that brown. It's the same color as the black uh, um, stems, and it's very hard to see what's happening. And once upon a time, I had one of my fern, which is the Boston fern, covered in scale, which I, I didn't know till it was too late, it was nearly dead. But once I sprayed it, looked after it, it has really done tremendously well. So do look, look for all those bugs because they, it's very hard to see, as I said. And as soon as you see them, do take action. You know, if you want to use a chemically based product like Darpel or Success, do spray it with them. If not, then make yourself the pest oil or neem oil or something like that to keep the bugs down. And um, everything else about the maiden hair bed is the most easiest easy care plants you can have if you know what you are doing. A lot of them do make mistakes because they don't give enough uh, humidity. Putting it in the bathroom, sometimes it can still fail. So do have it, you know, pebbles underneath um, to, to provide the humidity it needs. Not And, and don't forget that they also like a lot of water. Having it sitting in the water, never sort of water it from the top, have this base here, as I have already got filled up with water because they can then intake as much water as they like. You don't have to worry about it. If all fails, don't forget to buy the self-watering containers for them or the pots because that is very handy if you do not know what to do with maiden hair ferns. That's another good way of keeping them alive and looking healthy is self-watering containers. Um, also, um, do not forget to give them the soil that it needs. It's the uh, that humus type of soil, the, um, and also gritty sand and alluvial loamy type of soil is what this particular plant loves to grow in. All the best and see you later. Bye for now.